With Bray Wyatt's status following his absence and more, this is Wrestling Up. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Up and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Up Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. On Out of Character, Cody Rhodes talked about a regret for a decision he made after his father's passing. I did go back to work, but actually I needed some time. I feel like looking back on it in hindsight, I wish I had immediately gone back to work because you gotta fill the time, right? A lot of decisions I made, I felt more liberated in making those decisions than I perhaps would have had he still been alive. Cody revealed that he told Dusty once that he was thinking about switching his in-ring gear to tights, to which Dusty told his son that tights were for job guys. Cody said he can never see himself wearing trunks again. When asked about Matt Cardona, Cody Rhodes said this to Good Karma Wrestling. I'm really proud of him. He's out there. He's doing the indie god thing with the Indiana Jones hats. Everything Matt's doing, Matt has been the king of the indies now. This is going on year two. You only usually get one run in that role. He's going on year two. What Matt does next is going to be huge. If he goes to AEW, that'd be cool. But if he comes back to WWE, that's what I want. It would be off the charts. I think he's a huge get, a huge free agent, and he's the best he's ever been. On Café de René, Jake Roberts gave his take on MJF throwing a drink on a fan at AEW Revolution as he said, Yeah, yeah, by far MJF is the best talker. Anything when you do something to a fan is too much, Roberts said about the situation with MJF throwing a drink on a kid. Here's the thing, guys. The fans are the ones that make you. Don't, hey, you fat bitch. There's no need for that. Number one, she probably is a fat bitch. And the kids beside her know mama's fat. She don't need to be reminded. Is she coming back? I doubt it because the kids are crying. The guy made fun of my my mama. I'm not coming back for that. Shh. There's absolutely no need to attack the fans. None. Zero. Zilch. MJF does have a problem with going too far. I think he just gets going and he just lets go. You can't let go. You got to keep control of your shh. Revealing the reason for him not winning the WWE title, Ken Shamrock told Steve Fall of Wrestling News that, I had a lot of other stuff going on too. The company's got to depend on you if you're carrying the strap, right? For me, I had a temper. I was wild. If I go up and I get that strap, can I represent the company properly? Am I going to lose my temper and beat somebody up severely and put them in the hospital? That's not going to represent the company well. So like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes where, you know, I was an aggressive guy and I was violent. Being a wrestler sometimes times, you know, you get to be able to control those things. Recalling the conversation he had with Vince McMahon before the WWE chairman announced his retirement, The Undertaker told BT Sport that he called me the day before he announced it, and we got in an argument because I thought he was ribbing me. I said, there's no way. There is absolutely no way you're stepping away. He was like, no, this is what I'm going to do. I'm like, why are you effing with me? This is insane. We ended up going at it a little bit. Finally, I was like, all right, okay. Sure enough, the next day, Vince resigned. But I knew there's no way he'd stay away. Even in this role, I think it's going to be challenging for him. I mean, that's his baby, man. He's the one that created this whole thing. I know he wants to make sure these TV deals and everything are done the right way. Right now, that's his sole motivation. But that's Vince McMahon. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But a WWE without Vince is, for me, hard to imagine. For that same interview, The Undertaker would also reveal his biggest regret was not getting to work with Andre the Giant. Oh my gosh, he'll... So you know, Andre didn't like big guys. For most part, and for some reason, he loved me. When I came in, he was right there at the end, and he was working just a little bit. His knees and his back were really, really bad. But he had always had this idea. I'd come into the dressing room, i say, hey boss, how you doing today? And he would say, oh good, kid, one day, me and you, we make big money. I was like, really boss? He goes, yeah, I've got a good idea. I 
said, oh, well, let me hear about it. No, no, no. He was so old school, like he would never tell me. I never got to work with him. That is a huge regret. I would have loved just to have been in the ring with Andre. Yeah, I remember meeting him as a young kid in Houston. For Paul Bosch went to the Sam Houston Coliseum there in Houston. And I don't know, I might have been 12 years old. You know, shook his hand. It was just like, I can't believe his hand was that big. And then, you know, all those years later to be in the same dressing room with him. It was very cool. It was real surreal. Asked about Brock Lesnar being the one to end his WrestleMania winning streak, The Undertaker told BT Sport, I think it would have been great for Roman. I don't think that it elevated Brock's stardom like it could have helped someone else. I don't think Brock needed it. Brock was a major attraction. He was a star. I don't know if it enhanced him anymore. Staying on the topic of the streak, The Undertaker revealed names that had been pitched to break it, as he said. By the time we got to WrestleMania, we pretty much knew what was going to go down. But there were a few people, I guess, that Vince McMahon wanted to break the streak. Vladimir Kozlov, he wanted him. It was early on, and I think he wanted Edge to go over, and Edge refused. He said, no, I can't do it. That's how much he respected the streak and me, and what that streak meant to the business. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that until years after. That says a lot about the human being he is. Is. Saying this about WWE potentially getting a new owner after a sale, Undertaker told BT Sport, I would have a really hard time imagining that there wouldn't be some kind of contingency that Vince McMahon has some type of control there. I don't think he, even if the company was to get sold, which I don't have any feeling one way or the other, whether that's going to happen or not, I just can't imagine somebody coming in and buying the company and running it the same way with just the dedication to detail as the way it's run now. Giving details on Conan inducting Rey Mysterio into the WWE Hall of Fame, Dave Meltzer revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio, they said it would be okay unless Conan's under contract with MLW, so because of the lawsuit. They're not going to attempt to use him because that would look bad with the lawsuit. He's not under contract with MLW that I know, so he's doing it. As March 11th marked one year since Big E's neck injury when taking a suplex from Ridge Holland, Ridge has revealed on Twitter that fans are still not happy with him as he wrote, Death threats, threats to my family, lobbying for me to lose my job, being labeled as racist, great stuff, keep him coming. With it previously rumored that Gunter will take part in a triple threat match at WrestleMania against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful added that Gunter's WrestleMania plans have been solidly in place since about December. We've been told that by the time the world found out about the possibility of Brock Lesnar versus Gunter, it was already off the table. Talking about booking plans for SmackDown on Friday, Ringside News wrote, We have learned that a couple of Raw superstars are slated for SmackDown this week. So, if you're a fan of Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory, then you should tune into the blue brand this week too. Touching on Vince McMahon being present backstage at Raw supposedly to simply see John Cena, Dave Meltzer discussed this on Sunday night's main event saying, that's what they want you to believe, Triple H was in charge. But I mean, he has influence on stuff now and Triple H has even said so. You know, they talk about it. Triple H is the one in charge, but Vince offers his opinion and that's natural. I talked to somebody there, you know, about that, like that night, and it was just like, that's what they want you to believe. But you know, Levesque is the one in charge. He was the one giving all the orders and everything like that but Vince was there and whatever that means long run you know we'll see I'm just kind of told it's more than that when I said that's what they want you to believe that means that there's more to it than that In some unfortunate news, multiple pro wrestlers were involved in a car crash as the promotion Absolute Intense Wrestling wrote on Twitter, a carload of the AIW talent was in really bad accident traveling to a booking this morning. Thankfully, it sounds like everyone is going to be okay. Please keep Joshua Bishop, Derek Dillinger, Marino Tingalia, and Dominic Garini in your thoughts.
With him having been absent from AEW programming since All Out last year, CM Punk posted on his Instagram story where he is listening to Hate Breeds Honor Never Dies, as this could be an indication that he is returning to Ring of Honor. El Cotuero, who is a trios champion for AAA, was accused of domestic violence and is now going to jail, as a Lucha Libre Facebook page noted, updated information. Due to the excellent work of the Prosecutor's Office of Investigation of Domestic Violence Crime, the lawyers of Cotuero could not bail the probable responsible, and that's why the judge decided that the process should follow him in prison. The lawyers, after two hours of hearing, had no choice but to request the 144-hour constitutional term extension, so the hearing will resume until next Thursday. Notice the fighters' lawyers displeased face as they walked out of the Supreme Court. This Sunday was the first night that Dynamite slept in the reclusory East. It seems that Bray Wyatt has missed a recent show for WWE, as it was said on Wrestling Observer Radio. No, Bray Wyatt wasn't in MSG, and Braun Strowman replaced him. He was also in the Battle Royal, so yeah, they had the MSG show. I do not know more about it, other than he wasn't there, he wasn't on SmackDown either. Giving a WrestleMania status update for Wyatt, Ringside News added, We were told that Bray Wyatt's situation with his personal issues depends on what they consider personal issues. It was also noted to us that saying Bray Wyatt is dealing with personal personal issues was a very BS thing to say. Also, his Mania match will be fine. In another update on Bray Wyatt's status, Sean Ross Sapp noted that WWE sources familiar with the situation who have worked with Wyatt claim to Fightful that Bray Wyatt is currently sidelined with a physical issue and they're not sure on a return time as of now. There had been rumors that Wyatt had walked out due to creative issues, but thus far, we haven't gained any information that would confirm that and haven't been told that from anyone in the company thus far. Bray Wyatt had been slated for other live events and episodes episodes of SmackDown, but was pulled from those due to the physical issues WWE sources claim. However, even though he'd been sidelined, Bobby Lashley continued the feud without Bray Wyatt being there, including last week in a backstage segment. As of one point this weekend, Lashley wasn't scheduled for Raw. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.